Hi, welcome back to Focal Point EFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. The program is Focal Point. The network is the American Family Radio Talk Network, AFR Talk. I want to encourage you to consider uh, picking up some Easter buttons. We're coming up on the Easter season. This is a great opportunity to wear your faith on your sleeve or on your lapel, literally. These uh, beautiful Easter buttons they have this expression on them. Easter means he lives. We've got three crosses there. You can purchase them by going to afastore.net. Afastore.net. That will get you right to the our online store where you can pick up these buttons. Uh, we've got Easter buttons. The box is starting at about 12 bucks. We've got Easter stickers. Easter means he lives. We have yard signs. We've got a display box. We've got church packs for your entire church that started just $45. We've even got some uh, coffee. We've even got an Easter coffee special. If that's what uh, floats your boat, all of that you can get at um, uh, afastore.net. Uh, and if you want to uh, call, you can call. The number is 877 877- Nine two seven four nine one seven eight seven seven nine two seven four nine one seven. Encourage you uh, to do that uh, today. Now, all of the talk uh, and, and Jeff Reed did a great job with the audio tease at the beginning. Is all about the sequester. I've got a column up at our new website, Instant Analysis, on the subject of the sequester. We've talked about this before, but I make it clear. Look, this whole thing is a big fat. Nothing burger. I, I mean, everything that we're hearing coming out of this administration, coming out of the White House, is just hype, and it is just uh, hysteria. Uh, it, it's it, and I liken it in the column to going to a scary movie. You know, you go to a scary movie, and you know, you get into the movie, you sort of suspend uh, uh, disbelief, and you get caught up in the story, and pretty soon you're inside, you're churning, and. You're gripping the arms of your chair, and maybe your wife is gripping your arm because she's in fear. She, it's frightening her, and it's all very realistic, and it's pretty intense. Now, if you want to break that, if you want to break that fear, all you have to do is just remind yourself that all of this is being filmed on a set. It's all make-believe. It's all pretend. The blood is fake. The wounds are are fake. The deaths are fake. And uh, just outside of the range of what you can see, there are cameras with camera operators. There's a director sitting there calling action and cut. You've got a guy with a sound boom hovering over the set. You've got all kinds of people milling around in the darkness. And immediately, the fear just dissipates because you realize it, it, it is all hype. There's nothing to it. It's all imagination. It's all fiction. And that's exactly what we have going on with the this sequester business. Now, let's play clip number one. Uh, this is, um, well, in fact, let's, let's start with clip number two, if we can, Rob. Let's jump down to that one. This is a fairly long clip, but this is a montage of all of the people in the administration trying to scare you out of your wits trying to get you to believe that this is the Mayan calendar. It wasn't December whatever it was, 2012, that was the end of the world. This is the end of the world. Friday is the end of the world. It's Armageddon. It's the, it's the worst parts of the Bible all coming to fruition on one single day. So you've got President Obama. You'll hear from Janet Napolitano. You'll hear from Ray LaHood. You'll hear from Eric Holder, all of them telling you a complete boatload of lies in order to scare you into thinking that something has to be done, trying to create and stir up in the American people the sense of panic that it's all over if we don't do something radical by Friday, by Thursday at midnight. Let's listen. In a few days, Congress might allow a series of immediate, painful, arbitrary budget cuts to take place, known in Washington as the sequester. Now, that's a pretty bad name, sequester. The effects are even worse than the name. Emergency responders, their ability to help communities respond to and recover from disasters will be degraded. Thousands of teachers and educators will be laid off. 
Border Patrol agents will see their hours reduced. We will have to begin to furlough Customs and Border Protection officers. It will reduce the Disaster Relief Fund by nearly $1 billion. Thousands of teachers and educators will be laid off. Tens of thousands of parents will have to deal with finding child care for their children. We're going to be looking at FBI agents, DEA agents, ATF agents who are going to be getting furloughed. Federal prosecutors will have to close cases and let criminals go. Air traffic controllers and airport security will see cutbacks. Flights to major cities like New York, Chicago, and San Francisco and others could experience delays of up to 90 minutes. Average wait times to clear customs will increase by as much as 50 percent. Hundreds of thousands of Americans will lose access to primary care and preventive care like flu vaccinations and cancer screenings. Emergency responders, their ability to help communities respond to and recover from disasters will be degraded. Our ability to uh, you know, share funds with our, our partners to support things that we have supported for years is really going to be impacted. The Homeland Security grant funding would be reduced to its lowest level in seven years, leading to potential layoffs of state and local emergency personnel across the country. So these cuts are not smart, they are not fair, they will hurt our economy, they will add hundreds of thousands of Americans to the unemployment rolls. This is not an abstraction. People will lose their jobs. And this is just all hype. There is absolutely nothing to anything of what you just heard. We've been over this. I'm not going to go back through the details. But the federal government, even with the sequester, will spend more money in 2013 than it spent in 2012. So you've got to ask yourself the question, if the federal government is going to spend more money this year than it spent last year, why in the world are 800,000 people going to be furloughed? Why are daycare centers going to be laid off? Why is our Navy going to be eviscerated? Why are people going to be put out on the streets? It makes absolutely no sense. Ray LaHood trying to say the airports are going to shut down. People are going to be stranded. You're going to have to wait three, four hours to get on a plane. Why? We went over that yesterday. The Department of Transportation under Ray LaHood has more money to spend in the next 12 months than it did in the last 12. It's just all hype. Now, what you're going to see, you know, Janet Napolitano did this yesterday. They're going to release hundreds of illegal aliens. These are criminals. They're lawbreakers. They have trespassed on our sovereign soil. They've broken our laws. They've been detained. They're in jail. And Janet Napolitano is going to release them into our culture. And she's saying, I've got to do it because the sequester might happen. I mean, realize the insanity of that. In other words, the, the cuts haven't even, they're not cuts, but the adjustments have not even happened yet. The sequester's not even gone into effect. She has all of the money that she had at the beginning of this week, but she's already releasing illegal aliens, criminals, into our culture, even though her budget is exactly the same. Sequester has not even gone into effect, so it's all hype. It's all scaremongering. It's all fear-mongering. And I would encourage you not to believe a single word of it. Leon Panetta trying to scare us about national defense. The Pentagon is going to spend more in the next 12 months than it spent in the last 12. Department of Transportation runs TSA and the air traffic controllers. They've got more money to spend this year than they did last year. Janet Napolitano, Department of Homeland Security, they've got more money to spend this year than they did last year. There are no cuts. There is only a reduction in the rate of growth. Now, we've got some more sound bites we'll get to, but we want to take some phone calls. Let's go to Al in Jackson, Mississippi. Al, welcome to Focal Point. What's on your mind? Hey, um, thank you for accepting my call. The thing is, um, when you were saying earlier about, like, love is a feminine aspect of, I, I don't agree with that because God is love. And according to your thought process, God would be feminine. He's not male or female. He, God is above that. But, you know, it's just interesting that you said, like, patience is a female virtue. That's, that's not true either. But um, have a blessed day, man. It just sounds like you're just talking a little bit. Well, Al, uh, let me ask you a question while I still got you. Uh, so you believe God is just, correct? Yes. Yeah, and, and I believe that too. Do you believe that God is, uh, you believe that God is love. Do you also believe yes. that God is just? 
but I know it says, yeah, I believe there's a just attribute, but in the, in the Bible itself it says God is love, so I know God is love. Do you know that God is also just? You infer that, but it doesn't say that in the Bible. Oh, yeah, it does all the time. Well, then praise God. If it says it, I agree with it. All okay, right, well, then, then, Al, I think you and I agree that God is both loving and he is also just. We both agree on that, correct? But love is not a feminine aspect of God, neither patience. Okay, but you believe that what we ought to reflect is the full character of God, both his love and his justice. And love is going to win out because David said it, God's love is unfailing, meaning like it never ends. But then his justice, it kind of runs out of grace because grace covers us when justice really can't really give us. We don't, we don't really justify in receiving salvation. It's because of God's grace that we have that. Well, no, 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 hold it. Now, now, no now, now, Al, here, here's, where you, here's, where you got to, here's where you got to expand your thinking a little bit. Remember what, what John said in 1 John 1. He says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and what? Just. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So when we sin, God's justice demands punishment for that sin. We cannot be forgiven unless God's justice is satisfied. And that was satisfied on the cross when Jesus Christ took the penalty, took the punishment that should have fallen on you and me, Al, and that satisfied God's justice. We are not forgiven just because of the love of God. We are forgiven because the justice of God was satisfied. It had to be satisfied. And in Christ, it was satisfied. So I think we're on the same page. We, we believe that God is both loving and God is just, and we ought to reflect that balance in our own lives. Are we in agreement on that? Well, I give God the glory, but uh, in terms of God is more loved than just. No, he's both. If he was more loved than just, Al, Jesus wouldn't have had to die on the cross. He's both loving and he is just, working in a beautiful balance. Focal Point AFR Talk back in two.